Reinforcement learning is one of the most powerful ideas in technology. We've seen it master the world's most complex games, discover new medicines, and optimize systems we barely understand. I see it used for all these incredible purposes, but watching them, I wondered about something simpler, something more human. Can it make me laugh? How do we even begin to make a machine learn something as subjective as comedy? We can't just give it a textbook. We also can't code every condition that actually makes humor happen because it's such an abstract concept. And so what we need is an approach that can recognize patterns, one that can actually see me react and say, oh, that's funny. Let me keep doing that. Much like I try to do when I get likes on YouTube. And I think this type of problem is exactly where reinforcement learning comes in. Now, it's actually a very simple concept. And to demonstrate it, we're going to use my buddy Ace because reinforcement learning actually mimics the way that living beings learn. All he cares about is this reward right now, this treat I have. What do I need to do to get that treat? No. Down. Good boy. Theoretically, if I do that enough times, Ace is going to make the link in his brain that when I say down and he goes down, he's going to get a reward. Now, what we're going to be building is the exact same premise, except instead of Ace, we have a robot. And instead of treats, I'm going to be laughing. This leads us to our first problem. What does the AI actually do? See, it's one thing to just say be funny, but it could literally do anything in response to that. And so we need some way to narrow it down. After thinking about it for a bit, I found my answer in internet culture. What are these videos? They're not creating humor from scratch. They're a curated library of meme images and meme sounds played at a precise time. And that's when I realized what my AI had to do. It had to have its very own soundboard. I wanted the best sounds possible, so I wrote this Python script using a library called Selenium, which is a powerful tool that lets code control a web browser just like a person would. The script navigates the website myinstance.com, a massive archive of sound clips. It then goes through page by page, finds the direct link to each mp3 file, and downloads it. We have the vine boom, the bruh, the sad trombone, and one by one, they filled the folder on my computer. Next, we needed the visuals. I was lucky enough to find this Pinterest folder of reaction images that was actually pretty funny. So, I wrote a second scraper. This one also uses Selenium to browse to my board, but its job is much harder. Pinterest is designed to keep you scrolling forever. So, the script has to scroll down, wait for new images to load, find all the highest resolution image URLs, and then download them, making sure to avoid any duplicates. It's that easy. It only took me two weeks. So now we finally have everything. Our AI has access to two folders, one of images, one of sounds, and now we just write a simple script, take some random ones from the first one, take some random ones from the second one, and tries to make a compilation out of them. With that, it is finally time to start training. So I sat there for hours and hours, and the AI would generate a five second sequence, and I'd type a number over and over and over again. Oh my God! <laughs> After the first hour, the novelty had completely worn off. When you train AI, you can simulate thousands of years because you run thousands of computers in parallel. I, on the other hand, have not figured out how to clone myself. Not yet, at least. This was taking far too long. The AI needed thousands, maybe tens of thousands of data points to learn these subtle patterns of humor. And at this rate, it would take months of my life to get a decent result. I had to find a way to automate the reward. And then it hit me. What is the one true physical sign of a successful joke? <laughs> Laughter. Our new plan was to have our computer detect if we're laughing and automatically give it a score of one to five and assign it to the AI. This way, I could just kick my little feet up Relax, just let it do all the work for me. It was actually pretty easy to do this. We used a library called OpenCV, which has many pre-trained models that are really good at face detection and mouth detection. 
After not too long, I had a pretty good demo, and once I connected it back to our AI, everything was running smoothly. I was blasting through these. I can't believe I built an AI to help an AI to help me laugh, but I guess that's just the world we live in now. We were going fast now, but what you have to understand about these AIs is that they will take advantage of every loophole they could find. And we found our first one. Wait, it's only standing the vine boom. <laughs> I do find it funny though. No. It found a joke that worked. I'm a sucker for the vine boom. I'm sorry. I can't control it. I hear it and I laugh. So, it reliably just kept spamming it because the AI found the first thing that seemed to maximize its reward and it became obsessed. I could not get it to stop playing the vine boom. It was in a creative rut. I'm not gonna lie, some part of me thought that like, yes, it did make me laugh and it has discovered what I find funny, but I know that this is a common problem in reinforcement learning. And so I can't in good faith end the project there. We can all agree that we want it to be more creative and discover something more interesting. And so, we have to solve this problem. I'm dizzy from trying to get a, cool, a more interesting shot. This is the exploration versus exploitation problem in its purest form. The AI had found something that was good, and it was afraid to try anything else to search for maybe something that might be better. And so, to solve this, I had to force it to innovate. I introduced a chaos parameter where 90% of the time, the AI was allowed to perform the action it thought would get the highest score, but 10% of the time, it was forced to choose a completely random image and a completely random sound. It needed a creative push. It figured out that I like SpongeBob as well because of the meta tags of the photo. You can argue that this is kind of the same thing as the last problem, but I think figuring out that I like SpongeBob and Vine Booms and having something as good as this, go, go, go has left me satisfied.